Hey everyone, welcome and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be continuing the council. I'm very excited. Um, I can't wait to see what happens with that one woman getting shot. I think her name is Emily, I think it was. Now I don't know if that is like a spoiler for like the end of the series. Like if it's going to be near the end. Or if it's going to happen in this episode. We'll find out probably, I'm assuming. Um, I think there's only two chapters in this episode, so I don't know how long it's going to be. I know the last one was pretty long, but yeah, we'll see, so let's get into it. How many times must I tell you? You must never put your life on the line for me. Mother has always had a fascination for Lord Mortimer, but has never wanted to tell me why. We are doing our utmost to find your mother as quickly as possible, without your mother. Hundreds of men of the cloth would have gone to the guillotine. All I can tell you is I'm looking for my sister. Do you believe your mother capable of torturing a child? An agreement for cannons. Lord Mortimer assured me that you are to take over the project on behalf of your mother. Your hand, Christoph von Wollner, Minister of Religious Affairs, and Jacques Perrou, French Revolutionary Tribunal Judge. You will find that Lord Mortimer is not what one would call conventional, Monsieur de Richet. I do apologize for being late. I was obliged to clear up some urgent business. Last we meet, Monsieur de Richet. Do you mind if I call you Louis? Please do. Thank you. I wish to apologize wholeheartedly, Louis. I made you cross the seas, and I wasn't even here to welcome you. When I asked you to join us here, it, it was, of course, in the hope that you would help us find your mother. However, there may be some new developments, but I, I don't know if they are linked to your mother. We have found Elizabeth Adams' body in her room. I'm afraid she was brutally murdered, stabbed several times. I can't believe it. We, we bumped into each other last night on our way to bed. Yes, I know. Duchess Hillsborough informed us that she accompanied you at the... Wait, 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 wait. Is that... That was the, oh, is that the girl that we uh, decided not to help? Sorry, it's been like a week since I played it, so I completely forgot about that part. So I'm assuming that if we would have went with her, she wouldn't have been killed. That kind of sucks. Being of the evening, you apparently bumped into Miss Adams, who wanted to speak to you. We are told you turned her away and she went away on her own. That's correct. Do you know what she wanted to see you about, by any chance? Not in the least. Pity. The poor child was probably trying to find help. I thought it could wait until tomorrow. Hmm. Apparently not. Louis, I shan't hide the fact that this tragedy puts me in a very delicate situation. I cannot risk upsetting the smooth operation of our next conference. But the case cannot remain unaddressed. I must reassure my guests, and justice will be done. And for that to happen, I must ask for your help. Why is that? You met Elizabeth. You spoke together, I believe. She trusted you. Listen, Louis. Find out who could have committed this murder. I refuse to believe that one of my guests is the murderer. I want to know who is responsible for this. And I trust you. You have my backing. You must stop at nothing. Can I count on you? Of course. H how would you like me to proceed? Sure, why not? Maybe you could start by going to the scene of the crime. Elizabeth was attacked in her room. Do you have any suspects in mind, my lord? 
I spent most of the night talking with Sir Gregory and his eminence Piaggi. So I think you can remove them from the list of suspects. Monsieur Bonaparte and President Washington left the party after midnight, I believe. They were tired and went up to bed. Right. I'll get over there immediately. Thank you, Louis. Now, once you've finished, come back and let me know your findings. I'll be waiting. And Louis, you've got permission to search through the guests' rooms. They've all been notified and they agree. There's marks on the body. She must have fought like a lion. It couldn't have happened without a lot of noise. There are also a number of old scars. People who scar themselves in this way generally do so to relieve some kind of psychological suffering. By trying to master the pain, they establish their self-control. Cedulum de Amoth tattooed on her, the symbol of the living God, written in the language of angels, according to believers. It is rare for someone to know about symbols like this at her age, unless her mother was a tutor. She had the Cedulum de Amoth tattooed on her, the symbol of the living God, written in the language of angels, according to believers. It is rare for someone to know about symbols like this at her age, unless her mother was a tutor. I see no sign of bruising on the skull. The only clue is a scar from a previous craniectomy. Poor Elizabeth, she, she must have been very young when she went through all that. That's torture. She also has old scars around the neck, maybe mutilations. What a strange smell. Laudanum. Certain courtiers use it to get drunk. If taken in large quantities, it can provoke fits of madness. Blood, but no trace of blows on the legs. 
direction the blood streaks caused by the wounds to the thorax show that she was standing when she lost blood. This proves that she was standing when she was assassinated. Possibly held by someone or something. I count no fewer than nine wounds on the thorax with a lot of blood. On first sight, I'd say that's what caused her death. A pentagram? What the hell's been going on here? Contrary to what most people believe, a pentagram's not there to conjure up, I don't know, what evil or demonic creature. With the point toward the top, the pentagram is an ancient symbol of protection against evil. Many esoteric rituals are based on this shape. Could Elizabeth have been sacrificed during an occult ritual? letter gave me much cause for concern. Your words were so cold, as if emotions no longer mattered to you. Father maintains that the secondary effects of your treatment still trouble you, but that they will soon subside. Should I believe him? I cling to the belief that we shall soon see each other again, at long last. Right soon. Your loving sister, Abigail. P.S. Don't forget to tell me what present you want. August 24th, 1792. Elizabeth, I am driven to despair and doubt there is any point in writing to you. I'm not even sure you'll receive my letters. Father controls my correspondence more and more. I am certain he filters our exchanges. Thankfully, one of the chambermaids is able to help me get my letters to you, but they still remain unanswered. I often think about you and pray every day to be able to hold you tight. We have so much time to make up. I beg you, answer me, please. Your loving sister, Abigail. P.S. That horrible woman came again yesterday. She spent a long time speaking with father. I didn't understand everything because they spoke in French, but I'm sure they were talking about you. Piece of fabric. High quality at that. I'd say it's silk. Going by the texture and the gray hue, it must come from a, a dress, that kind that women of quality wear. Has sir finished with this room? I know enough now. Thank you. Very well, sir. Sir may return whenever need be. I shall guard the door. Good day, Monsieur de Richet. Mr. Volner, are you looking for anything in particular? Next to Elizabeth's room? I... I... No. No, I... Uh... Nothing special. That's not suspicious. I'd have thought this is not really the shortest way to get to your suite. Uh, yes, I, I wasn't really looking where I was going. I shall leave you now, sir. I will return to my room. President George Washington.
Greetings, Liam. Mr. President, you can guess why I'm here. Of course. Lord Mortimer has sent me to ask you a few questions about last night. It's... How am I going to tell Elizabeth's father that she's dead? I know, Mr. President. I shall endeavor to find out the truth about this tragedy. I must ask you to help me, though. Please. Find the degenerate pig who did this, Louis. Tell me, Mr. President, had you spoken to Elizabeth since your arrival? You know her father. You thought she was dead. No, I didn't. And I believe I'll be taking my remorse with me to my grave. I wanted to, but I didn't know where to begin. You can't blame yourself. You, well, you couldn't have known that her days were numbered. Do you know if she had any enemies, Mr. President? Not that I know of. I heard about her altercation with Mr. Perry, but that case was closed, if I'm not mistaken. But if in doubt, I wouldn't leave any door unopened, and I'd go and question your fellow countrymen. Don't worry. Countryman or not, I'm not letting anybody slip through the cracks. Do you know why she came to the island? To get help, if I'm not mistaken. Isn't that right? Indeed. Sir Gregory suggested to her father that he introduce her to Lord Mortimer to see if he could help her. Yes, Lord Mortimer has a talent for healing, apparently. I'm not surprised Sir Gregory advised her to come. Agreed. I shan't keep you any longer, Mr. President. Feel free, Louis. If there's anything I can do, just ask. Thank you, Mr. President. Huh, that's me. Oh, I'm not gonna question myself, that's for sure. Wow, my voice cracked. Duke Manuel Godoy. Tending children at the orphanage in Harlem. I find it a little hard to understand this painting choice. What can I do for you, Louis? I've come to see you about last night's tragedy. Did you hear anything about what happened to Elizabeth? Yes, we all did. Rumors spread quickly, you know. How awful. I didn't know her well. But I hope at least the poor thing didn't suffer too much. Death came quickly. You can be assured of that. If such a senseless act can happen here, then none of us is truly safe anywhere. Lord Mortimer must be mortified that one of his guests could have committed such an act, don't you think? He is indeed very upset about it. It's only natural after such a violent murder. Violent? What do you mean? Elizabeth was stabbed nine times. Oh my god, Louis. How awful. The murderer must have had a serious grudge against her to set upon her like that. It must have been a crime of passion. Do you know what happened exactly? In fact, Lord Mortimer has asked me to look into this case, Emily. Really? Are you Lord Mortimer's snoop now? I'm doing it for Elizabeth, not to please Mortimer. Good for you. Quite right, too. Have you found out anything? Since your arrival, did you notice anything strange about Elizabeth? Everything that happened around that poor child was strange. You saw that for yourself. I know. You're right. I'm looking for leads to try to reduce the number of suspects. 
Well, I would say that in addition to ourselves, you could also cross off President Washington. I went to see him during the night. I had some business with him, and I can confirm that he didn't leave his room all night. Hmm. That gives Washington an alibi. Did you and Elizabeth get to know each other? I must admit, Louis, I... I didn't take much interest in her. I feel a bit guilty about it, but I never actually spoke to her. She seemed burdened by her problems, and as she wasn't invited to the conference, I didn't really seek her out. I won't keep you, Emily. Thank you for answering my questions. See you, Louis. Monsieur de Richer, please be quick. We are both very busy. Did you hear about young Elizabeth? Indeed. It is deeply regrettable. Lord Mortimer asked me I to... I know. You no doubt want to know my alibi. I spent the night downstairs playing cards. Can you tell me who was present at the game, please? Well, there were Lord Mortimer, President Washington, and Sir Gregory. Thank you. Ah! And his eminence, Piaget, as well. Excuse me, I nearly forgot him. Poor soul. Did any of you leave during the game? Not that I know of, monsieur. I didn't exactly spend my time noting the other guests' comings and goings, but I don't think so. Thank you. Did you notice anything unusual during the evening? Nothing at all, except the luck of the devil of Lord Mortimer and Sir Gregory at cards. Did they win much? Oh la la, monsieur, they cleaned us out more like. But I plan on getting it all back before we leave. What time did the game end? I can't say exactly. As for me, I must have stayed until midnight. I was exhausted, oh, couldn't think straight, so I preferred to go up to bed. On your way up to bed, did you notice anything out of the ordinary? No, not in the least. The whole manor was sound asleep. Not really, no. Well, have we finished, monsieur? Exactly. Thanks again for all your answers. Good day. What do you want from me, Deriche? Greetings. It's fallen to me Cut that... the crap! Get to the point. We both know why you're here. And have you got anything to tell me? What does it matter? It's too late anyway. Do what you have to do and get out. It's never too late, sir. If you have something to say, now is the time. You don't understand. Everything's already written. It's over. Why is he behaving like the perfect culprit? What is it that's already written? I'm not sure I follow you. No, you don't. He did it. 100%. All right, have you finished? Not quite. I'd like you to answer a few questions. Let's get right to it. Are you a... Elizabeth Adams' murderer? That is for you to prove, if I'm not mistaken, boy. You weren't expecting me to do all the legwork for you, were you? Lazy man. Goodbye, sir. We shall meet again. Probably. A pattern of 
four circles. Dear friend, please come and join us. We must meet about the ongoing operations in Paris. A boat will be waiting for you in Calais and will take you to Dover in England. From there, a carriage will take you to the port of Tintagel, where a frigate will be waiting for you and other guests, so you can meet up with me on my island as quickly as possible. I await your arrival. Lord William Water. Have you finished? Not quite. I'd like you to answer a few questions. I'd like to talk about the letter you're writing. What woman is it addressed to? Who says it's a woman? I'm not saying any more. There's no point you insisting. The Massacre of the Innocents by Rubens. A bit gloomy. Guess my room is not that bad. I can't keep you any longer, Mr. President. Feel free, Louis. If there's anything I can do, just ask. Thank you, Mr. President. Portrait of George Washington.
Duke Manuel Godoy. Dear E, I received your last letter. Unfortunately, the Crown informed the Golden Order that our mission should under no circumstances hamper Sir Gregory's plans. Decidedly, they have support from the highest level in Buckingham Palace. So here we both are, hands and feet tied, and little room to maneuver. Keep me abreast of events. Our mission is becoming more complicated. Yours, E. P.S. The French chapter of the Order doesn't appear to know anything about the arrival of our friend Sarah. I therefore cannot comment on it. However, my guess is that she has come here for personal reasons. A letter from William Pitt the Elder addressed to Emily. He was the English Prime Minister. This letter dates from 15 years ago now. Madam, I shall never thank you enough for all your care and attention. I shall be indebted to you until my last breath. If you have any request of me, you only need ask. With regards to my son William, I shall never thank you enough for looking after him. You know the latter's preferences, and you will understand he needs you desperately. For that, and as agreed with Queen Charlotte, our friend Duke Hillsborough will carry out his task and meet with you within six months. From then on, you'll be free from want. Yours sincerely, William Pitt, Count of Chatham. What can I do for you, Louis? Did you and Elizabeth get to know each other? I must admit, Louis, I... I didn't take much interest in her. I feel a bit guilty about it, but I never actually spoke to her. She seemed burdened by her problems, and as she wasn't invited to the conference, I didn't really seek her out. I won't keep you, Emily. Thank you for answering my questions. See you, Louis. son, I'm writing to implore you to act quickly. The situation is rapidly worsening here. Powelli continues to steer our motherland, Corsica, toward open warfare between France and England. His men are everywhere. We are obliged to go into hiding and are unable to remain in the same place for more than two days. I wouldn't be surprised if they targeted us soon. Make haste, my son. You hold our destiny in your hands. Your loving mother. Maria Letizia Bonaparte. A bicorn decorated with a cockade. It must belong to a French soldier. Monsieur de Richer, please be quick. We are both very busy. Did you hear about young Elizabeth? Indeed. It is deeply regrettable. Lord Mortimer asked me to... I know. You no doubt want to know my alibi. I spent the night downstairs playing cards. Well, have we finished, monsieur? Exactly. Thanks again for all your answers. Good day.
four circles. Dear Monsieur Peru, I'm writing to thank you for the funds you sent. These funds will be crucial for the renovation of the western wing of the orphanage. The children you sent are doing marvelously well, and little Pierre will soon be walking. Some of them still sometimes suffer nightmares about their parents on the scaffold, but I expect they will cease in due course. Should you decide to send us more, please note that another 20 beds will soon be ready. The children and myself will never thank you enough. Long live the Republic. Long live France. Sis All right. I've retrieved everything. All right. Have you finished? Not quite. I'd like you to answer a few questions. I'd like to talk about the letter you're writing. Oh. What woman is it addressed to? Who says it's a woman? I'm not saying any more. There's no point you insisting. What can I do for you, Duriche? Monsieur, Lord Mortimer has appointed me to investigate the tragedy that befell us last night. Oh, yes. It's horrible. Yes. How can I help, Monsieur? Where were you last night? In my room. I read a few ancient manuscripts before going to bed, but I didn't stay up long. I was tired. Thank you kindly. We finished. I'll have a look around and then take my leave. Do whatever you have to do. Amber. Chest locked with a four letter code, surely a word close to the owner's heart. Further. There's a handwritten text signed by Von Vormer on this first page. Dear Elizabeth, I know that this book is but a small token compared to the delightful moments you gave me, but I hope that this will nonetheless keep the memory alive. Your ever obedient servant. So, Volner had a relationship with Elizabeth, but that's hardly surprising given his fondness for the occult. How can I help, monsieur? Excuse me for asking, but did you know Miss Adams? 
Oh, she... Uh, not really, to tell the truth. No. I found the Verter dedication, signed by your hand, monsieur. Would you like to change your version now? Be careful, Durichet. Don't push your luck. My relationship with Miss Adams was pure and has nothing to do with you. Well, continue playing the detective as you see fit. But if I find the bastard who did that to Elizabeth, I will... Yes! I would have preferred a simple response, but I see I have my answer now. I get the impression that your romance was over. Am I right? So? What does it matter to you? I would never have attacked her, if that's what you're insinuating. Who put an end to the relationship, you or her? It was her. It was her. But what does that matter? We both agreed. We finished. I'll have a look around and then take my leave. Do whatever you have to do. Chest locked with a four letter code, surely a word close to the owner's heart. The signs of the zodiac. Alchemist is an old man. Chest locked with a four letter code, surely a word close to the owner's heart. The alchemist is a young man. The signs of obscurantism. The sorrows of young Werther. There's a handwritten text signed by Von Vorner on this first page. Dear Elizabeth, I know that this book is but a small token compared to the delightful moments you gave me, but I hope that this will nonetheless keep the memory alive, your ever obedient servant. So, Volner had a relationship with Elizabeth, but that's hardly surprising given his fondness for the occult. Just locked with a four letter code, surely a word close to the owner's heart.
have no idea what this is supposed to be. How can I help, monsieur? We finished. I'll have a look around and then take my leave. Do whatever you have to do. smashed during the murder, then I've just established the time of the crime. That would clear Emily de facto because she was still with me at the time. So we know Emily didn't do it. We know George did Vials of laudanum. The label shows that this laudanum comes straight from America. I wonder if Washington's involved. I thought we just cleared him, but I guess I was wrong. Blood spatter indicates that the murder must have held Elizabeth upright during the attack. Even if Elizabeth wasn't very big, I, I doubt she wouldn't have put up a struggle. It takes tremendous strength to overpower someone like that. What the hell's been going on here? I wonder if Elizabeth's death has anything at all to do with this pentagram. If a ritual went wrong and degenerated, Elizabeth would probably have been killed in the center of the pentagram, not three meters from here. That's strange. A novel of the initiate notebook written in Elizabeth's handwriting. It is written in a mix of several languages. Not too easy to work out. June 11th, 1790. Oh, Piece of fabric, high quality at that. I'd say it's silk. Going by the texture and the gray hue, it must come from a, a dress, that kind that women of quality wear. Travel dress. The silk has been lightly waxed to protect it from bad weather. And I know the very woman who came up with the idea, given all the traveling she does. My mother. God help us. Why did she come here in the first place? The material appears to have undergone abnormal wear and tear. She must have been scouring the countryside, and that doesn't look good. A piece of fabric. High quality at that. I'd say it's silk. Going by the texture and the gray hue, it must come from a, a dress, that kind that women of quality wear. Alright, so it might be his mom. Alright, it's good to know. The blade is short and thin. Well sharpened, apparently. It's covered in blood. Still fresh. The lower part of the handle is unsullied by blood. The murderer gripped the weapon so tight that there's no blood where he held it. The handprint indicates a small and slender hand. Chest with a half circle pattern. An 
untutored hand copied these notes. Looks like a healing method. Well, that's a pity. The writing is barely legible. Greetings, Liam. Were you aware that Elizabeth took laudanum? Yes. She came to ask me for some. She had finished her reserve, I believe. Do you take it regularly, Mr. President? Unfortunately, I do, Louis. I still suffer from a terrible toothache, and it's not likely to get any better. It's just for that, then? Old age, my young friend. I don't wish it upon you, but you'll soon see. At my age, it's rare to have no problems in that domain. And do you take a lot? A moderate amount, Louis. Only the dosage indicated on the prescription of my doctor. I shan't keep you any longer, Mr. President. Feel free, Louis. If there's anything I can do, just ask. Thank you, Mr. President. Greetings, Liam. I'm talking to all the guests to find out who has an alibi and, well, who doesn't, Mr. President. Can you tell me what you were doing last night so that I can strike your name off the list? I spent the night right here, reading. All night? Exactly. Emily stopped by in the middle of the night, you can ask her. She wanted to talk about some business we have in common. Anything whatsoever to do with Elizabeth? Not at all, Louis. A business matter. I shan't keep you any longer, Mr. President. Feel free, Louis. If there's anything I can do, just ask. Thank you, Mr. President. What can I do for you, Louis? I found a torn piece of dress in Miss Adams' room. Gray silk. Where's it from? That's what I'm trying to find out. The color doesn't match any of Elizabeth's dresses, but I might not have found all of her clothes yet. Good Lord, Louis. I... Do you realize what this means? If this piece of dress isn't from Elizabeth, then it's... I don't have any grey silk dresses, Louis. Neither does my sister, since we wear the same clothes. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to check with you. I'm so sorry, Louis. Thank you.
Are you all right? You know, I'm sure there's a good reason why your mother was at the scene. Thank you, Emily. We found the murder weapon. What is it? A dagger. Quite slim. Have you found its owner? Not yet. Still searching as it happens. That said, since a blade penetrated the body several times, the murderer's hand will have been covered in blood. Mm. You think that's a clue? The handprint was a very slender hand, Emily. Probably that of a woman. Do you realize what that means? There are only three of us on the island. Bearing in mind that neither my sister nor myself had any reason to set upon the young lady, that means... I know, Emily. I know. Keep up your courage, Louis. I'm sure there's an explanation. You're bound to shed some light on it all. If what you say is true, Emily, I'm less and less enthusiastic about shedding any light on the subject. I won't keep you, Emily. Thank you for answering my questions. See you, Louis. Normal guys. Alright, so it pretty much must be the mother. Because we already know she's capable of killing her in the vision or whatever. Dear E, I received your last letter. Unfortunately, the Crown informed the Golden Order that our mission should, under no circumstances, hamper Sir Gregory's plans. I wasn't we read that already. So, as I was saying, it has to be the mother. Monsieur de Richer, please be quick. We are both very busy. Did you hear about young Elizabeth? Indeed. It is deeply regrettable. Lord Mortimer asked me to... I know. You no doubt want to know my alibi. I spent the night downstairs playing cards. Well, have we finished, monsieur? Exactly. Thanks again for all your answers. Good day. Battle of Alexander at Isus, or how Alexander the Great triumphed over King Darius. Yet another one with delusions of grandeur. All right, have you finished? Not quite. I'd like you to answer a few questions. Goodbye, sir. We shall meet again. Probably. Dear Miss... All right. I've retrieved everything. Your Eminence, I imagine that you've heard the news about Miss Adams. What a tragedy, my son. How could uh, such a thing have happened? That's exactly what I'm trying to find out. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary last night? Mm. I saw the young French soldier, Bonaparte, I believe, hanging around near Miss Adams' room. But I would not want to get an innocent man into trouble, Louis. It's probably nothing. Not to worry, Your Eminence. If he is innocent, then he has nothing to fear. Do you know why Monsieur Bonaparte was hanging around her room like that? Well, I wouldn't be surprised to learn that the dashing young soldier had become 
infatuated with a fragile young woman who looked a bit lost. But I don't think he got a very warm welcome. Bonaparte and Adams? <laughs> but they didn't even know each other, did they? I couldn't say to me. But if I were you, my son, I would talk to Monsieur Peru. You remember how violently he set upon Miss Adams. Oh, don't worry. He's on the list of suspects. Honey, the remedy of the gods. I've come to speak about the findings of the investigation, my lord. I'm listening, Louis. I believe I've identified the murderer. Really, Louis? All right, then. Please, think carefully before you give me your answer. This is a very, very serious accusation. From what I've found out, I... I... I believe that my mother is the culprit. Even though I find it hard to accept. Sarah? But why her? I found a piece of fabric that appears to have belonged to her and proves she was present at the scene of the crime. Interesting. Anything else? The print left on the knife near the body was left by a slender hand, without a doubt the hand of a woman. And there aren't many female guests. I see. Anything else, sir? I think that there is more than enough evidence here. Indeed, it's very worrying. Everything seems to indicate that your mother is responsible for Elizabeth's murder. Given the distinguished guests and the political issues involved at the conference, I trust you'll leave me to conclude the case in my own way. Now that we've examined the question from all sides, maybe you could explain to me why you asked me here, my lord. Right. It's time we spoke about your mother, Louis. She seems to be making every effort to steer clear of your guests. What, what do you mean? For the past few weeks, my mother's been playing cat and mouse, if you will. I don't know why, but it wouldn't surprise me to learn that she's trying to avoid someone. The question is, who? And in your opinion, would she be the cat or the mouse? Knowing my mother, she would be the cat. That doesn't make me feel any better, Louis. What was the official reason why my mother came to your island? I knew about your mother's activities and yours in the Golden Order. I thought we had everything to gain by working together. You mean the cannon deal with Monsieur Bonaparte? Among others, yes. How did you hear about that? Monsieur Bonaparte came to speak to me about it yesterday, during lunch. I see. So impetuous. He was supposed to let me speak to you about it first. Our friend Napoleon desperately needed financial backing to properly equip his army. I took it upon myself to back him because I have a firm conviction that he can go far. Yet he told me that you had spoken and that you hadn't been able to reach an understanding. Hmm. That's putting it mildly. Monsieur Bonaparte is one of those guys who only understands people who think like he does. Ah, I see what you mean. He is indeed rather inflexible comes to certain subjects. But I am still of the opinion that you can manage to get along. We shall see. However, there's one thing that surprises me. Did my mother intend to finance a war? I'm not sure that I follow. No, your mother's aim was not so much to partake in a war, but rather to make Monsieur Bonaparte accountable. France is in turmoil, and having support of a military man can often come in handy, Louis. You'll see. Once this deal was closed, I had big plans for Sarah. Such as what? You see, I've invited several 
influential figures on my island to present them with a project at the conference. It will be presented later today. I thought that the Golden Order had a role to play. And I still think so. I was hoping Sarah would be able to join us. Hmm. I see. Indeed, if by chance your mother decided not to return to us before the conference, would you do me the great honor of attending? If only to follow the deliberations while waiting for her to duly take her seat. Why not? We shall see. Ah, thank you so much. In this way, you'll be able to keep your mother informed of what he said. Um, there's something else I'd like to briefly go over. Earlier, you asked me the official reason for your mother's presence here. Is there an off-the-record reason why your mother came here? If only my mother had trusted me, but she remained very mysterious. I'd have been delighted to answer your question. Is this usual for her? As head of the Order, secrets are her bread and butter, as you can imagine. That said, it's the first time she hasn't let me in on the reason for her trip. And it intrigues me, to tell you the truth. Well, I am sure that Sarah will explain everything once she reappears. There's something I still don't get. In your opinion, why would your mother remain in hiding over several weeks? Her not coming back to the manor after so long makes me wonder if she is wary of someone. Well, certainly. But whom? The only ones who were present during her stay were Sir Gregory, Duchess Hillsborough, Mr. Von Wolder, and myself. And what about Mr. Von Wolder? Do you know him well? To be honest, not really. He's closer to Gregory. I'm not the one who invited him. What I know of him is what they say in high society salons. He's a man who manages to form alliances with the right people when it's necessary. As a minister of the church, he actively repressed the religions of the book and the spirit of the Enlightenment. And, if I'm not mistaken, he has a passion for alchemy. But then, I must admit, he is rather evasive and not very talkative, at least toward me. I'd like to have a word with him if I get the chance. He might be able to tell me more about my mother's last days with you. The only thing I can tell you is that Sarah had indeed changed. At the beginning of her stay here, we enjoyed spending time together solving the world's problems. You seem to know my mother very well, my lord. What did you talk about together? Oh, as soon as we had a little free time, we liked to share points of view about practically any subject. We would find ourselves embarked on interminable discussions that could go from Monsieur Blanchard's flight in a hot air balloon to the Treaty of Jersey or the adoption of the metric system in France last year, or even Mr. Eli Whitney's invention in the United States. My mother must have undoubtedly taken great pleasure in these exchanges. She always was one to appreciate broadening her knowledge. I'm surprised she didn't get you started on the Crusades. It was her favorite subject. <laughs> Are you joking? Sarah and I spent entire days together reliving them. It so happens that the Crusades are also my subject of predilection, especially the Third. My ancestor distinguished himself brilliantly during the Siege of saint jean d'Arc. Unfortunately, my lord, the Crusades are not my chosen field. Well, it doesn't matter. You have plenty of time to learn. Your mother is a very well-read woman. You're quite lucky to have her as a model, Louis. Yes, I know. But I'm still very worried. I must admit, there are worse things to worry about now, Louis. What do you mean? Since she disappeared, your mother has been seen once. Her behavior on the evening of your arrival greatly surprised Gregory and myself. 
She resurfaced to attack Emma, Emily Hillsborough's twin sister. And she shot her with a pistol. Then, before Gregory could intervene, she ran off and disappeared again. I beg your pardon? Hang on. That means my vision on the wharf, it, it was actually happening inside the manor. Mother shot Emily's sister? The very person she came looking for? Why would she do that? Excuse me, but between that and the childhood of Lady Adams... Wait, so... It's not like a vision, it's like he is seeing it as it happens? Well, okay, yeah, well... I was not expecting that, that's for sure. It's all a bit much for me to cope with. I need to piece it all together again to see things more clearly. You said that you spent a lot of time talking together at the beginning. What happened for that to change? I'm afraid I, I haven't much to tell you. The more the days went by, the more she withdrew into herself. She never gave me an explanation. Until the day came when she purely and simply disappeared. Where, where did she go when she wanted to be alone? She would shut herself away in a room we use as a box room upstairs. W would you allow me to go there? Naturally, Louis, of course. I'll send you a servant to open it. Thank you. One last thing, although I don't know if there is a connection. I'm listening. A gate was forced the other night near the wharf. Nothing serious, just a few small things damaged. Sorry, my lord, but I was searching for leads to my mother. I thought I was hot on her trail and didn't take any precautions. Well, you could have reported it to a servant. But never mind. I shall put it down to your ardor and anxiety. However, please try to respect my estate in future. I certainly will. Please accept my sincerest apologies. That's all I can tell you about the disappearance of your mother, Louis. I would like to have been more helpful. I shall stay on her trail and follow up any leads. Thank you. Uh, we will meet later on to welcome our last guest. In the meantime, I shall get someone to open the box room upstairs for you. Thank you. Hmm, the room is just opposite Mortimer's study. Jacques Perru, Monsieur Napoleon Bonaparte. Duchess Emily Hillsborough. Duke Manuel Godoy. Huh, that's me. 
Monseigneur, His Eminence Cardinal Piaggi. President George Washington. Johann von Wunder. Okay. What is this disc? Dante's Paradise. Raise your head and be reassured, for what comes up here from the mortal world must ripen in our rays. The door appears to be locked on the other side. something fall to the ground. A metallic sound, like... We'll see if it works. It's open. That works. Several portraits of apostles all signed by Guido Pliny. It looks like someone touched this commode recently. Their fingerprints on the sheets and in the dust. A painting of St. Mark from the collection of the apostles by Guido Rini. Chest with the occult symbol representing air. A chest with the occult symbol representing air. by Guido Rini. The New Testament. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John and Jordan. chest with the occult symbol representing air. Several portraits of apostles, 
all signed by Guido Rini. It looks like someone touched this commode recently. Their fingerprints on the sheets and in the dust. Papers in the chimney. There's a legible fragment left. Hey, I recognize my mother's handwriting. She says we must find a safer way to communicate. Someone is on to us. Trust in my faith in the man with the sword. So mother had an accomplice here. Who could it be? Who could she be suspicious of? I must find the next part. Faith, sword, I recognize her love of riddles there. Several portraits of apostles, all signed by Guido Rini. Looks like someone touched this commode recently. There are fingerprints on the sheets and in the dust. St. Paul painted by Guido Rini. St. Paul on the Road to Damascus by Caravaggio. A fierce opponent of the first Christians, St. Paul is suddenly struck by the call of Jesus Christ and converts. It's the best known conversion in Christian history, which teaches us that even enemies of Christ can be saved and even become his greatest apostles after finding faith. From what I can recall, the account of his conversion could be found in the epistles to the Galatians, the Philippians, the Corinthians, and the Acts of the Apostles. Caravaggio attained a magnificent command of black and the play of colors, too. Paul facing an ordeal, the curtains of his illusions being raised, and receives the light from his Savior. Chest with the occult symbol representing air. All right, so it is in this room somewhere. There are burnt papers in the chimney. There's a legible fragment left. Hey, I recognize my mother's handwriting. She says, we must find a safer way to communicate. Someone is on to us. Trust in my faith in the man with the sword. So mother had an accomplice here. Who could it be? Who could she be suspicious of? 
I must find the next part. Faith, sword. I recognize your love of riddles there. Dante's Paradise. Raise your head and be reassured, for what comes up here from the mortal world must ripen in our rays. is incredibly precious. I believe this is the book my mother referred to when calling upon the Lord. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. But wait, a note from mother is carefully folded between the pages here. What does it say? Dear E, I'm glad you found this note. I was afraid the code of the two groups of pilgrims would mislead you. Pick up the package. You know where and hide it where no one will find it. It's imperative awaiting your reply, hidden behind the youngest apostle. What? The youngest apostle? What does mother mean by that? Therefore, there is utterly a fault among you, because ye go to law with one another. Why do ye not rather suffer injustice? Why do ye not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Ah, oh, look, here's a message. It is of paramount importance that no one finds it. Watch out for the Prussian, he's on the trail. Let's meet up. I'll leave it to you to organize the rendezvous. Not today. I'm unable to do it. In the meantime, I'll follow the first group to Mark, who will reveal the answer to them. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected, and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. Here's a message. There are some complications. Indeed, the Prussian is insistent. What's happening at your end? Do you need help? If tonight is not possible, let's see tomorrow evening, in the south room, where we reviewed the situation. When Paul understood that only the axe counted, he went back on his tracks. I await your confirmation to his left, in the company of the pilgrims that have joined him. Yeah. This last comment is about their code. I should find new pilgrims near Paul. And he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while they were made ready, he fell into a trance. Hey, there's a note here. A message from mother in reply to E. We must leave urgently, but first I absolutely must go beyond the nightmare. Watch out for Volner. He figured out I was avoiding him. A lay suspicion. See you tomorrow evening. 
Stand ready. For now, let's cease all communication until we meet. Take care of yourself. I suppose this must be the last message. What happened afterward? If it's what I suspect, I, I fear the worst. What did Mother mean by, I absolutely must go beyond the nightmare? I must go beyond the nightmare. What does she mean by that? Clearly, she must be trying to do something useful, but the what? The nightmare. Does that remind me of anything? It probably has to do with an object or something. Granting that this is the case, where might it be found? I thought it would have been over there, but something's telling me that it isn't. I better keep searching. Mortimer's getting his guests together. I ought to join them so I don't look suspicious. small salon. You are expected in the small salon, sir. Emily, I must speak to you. What's the matter, Louis? About last night, I'm guessing. I, sadly, no. Even if I'd like to have, I... Alas, there are more pressing matters. I have news about your sister. What have you found out? Look, I've started piecing together the events leading up to my mother's disappearance and your sister's. D did my mother know about your secret? Yes, even though I belong to the English chapter, her rank in the Order gives her access to a good deal of personal information. Must have been Emma I saw in my vision. I was given to understand that my mother and your sister bonded during their stay. I've got a question that might seem a little bit strange. I'm listening. If I said go beyond the nightmare, would that ring any bells? Hmm. No, means nothing to me. Do you mean literally or figuratively speaking? My mother used to talk about it, in the figurative sense, probably. We still need to understand what she was referring to, though. If I find something, I'll let you know. Should I speak to her about my vision? If what I saw is true, she might want to take revenge. Mm, Emily, sure. there's something else. Go on, then. It's, it's about your sister. I don't know what happened exactly, but it's possible that my mother had a go at her. I know, Louis. I found out that same evening. Well, thanks for not trying to hide it. What? Why didn't you tell me? I didn't know if I could trust you. Now I know I can. Rude. It seems that your mother tricked Emma. She apparently asked her to hide an important book so that even she wouldn't know where it was. And then she shot her like a dog to make sure no one would ever find it again. How did you find out? Sir Gregory told me on my arrival. I'm sincerely sorry, Emily. Thank you, Louis. You're very kind. It means a lot to me. But you do realize your mother will have to accept the consequences of her acts. Th there must be an explanation, Emily. That's what we shall see. We'll speak about it later, somewhere safe. Come, Louis. They're waiting for us. You will pay dearly, Peru, 
I'm sure you were involved somewhere along the line. That's right. Pretend you don't know. One piece of advice. Don't travel through France on your way back, or it'll cost you dearly. Calm now, my friends. Let's calm down. Everyone seems to be a little unnecessarily heated. Don't forget where you are, please. What's going on here exactly? Sir Gregory called us together to introduce the last guest. But hardly had we arrived when he set upon Monsieur Peru. And who is this charming character? Manuel Godoy, the Duke of La Alcudia. He's the head of the Spanish government, Monsieur de Richer. He's the one who, in practice, controls Spain. How could you dare do such a thing? Dios mio, you are all out of your minds! Really, Duke Manuel? What made you kick up such a fuss? What? Have you not heard? Well, let me inform you that yesterday morning at 10.22 a.m. precisely, in the middle of the Place de la Révolution in Paris, by decree of the National Convention which Monsieur Peru works for, King Louis was guillotined. What? Oh, no. The King of France is dead, gentlemen. Our monarchies are in danger. I have said it before. How dare they? Oh, dear. Oh, as if it oh, gracious. Is it not the oh, God. Paul. Hmm. Friends, friends, let us calm down. Don't pretend to be surprised. He got a fair trial. Ridiculous. Bastard. He was sentenced to death by 361 votes to 360. You beheaded a king for one vote. Is that your democracy? What an obnoxious act. Until this, anything was possible. This political coup will have grave consequences. France is lost. Gentlemen, please, let us take a step back a moment. In the name of holiness, he was the highest representative of God in France, Emily. Gentlemen, Duchess, we're all among people of reputable company here. We should be able to manage the conflicts of our nations in a respectful and orderly manner. I fully agree with you, sir. But that's enough, sir. With whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? Louis Maras de Richer. Are you related to Sarah de Richer? Sarah is his mother, Duke. Gentlemen, this news affects us all, but I must ask you to remain calm. It's not the first time history has taken us by surprise. Let's ensure that our respective countries are allowed to respond appropriately to this news. Oh, rest assured. The response will not fall short, my friend. Good for you. Well, Your Grace, here I was preparing to introduce you as is proper, and you've beaten me to it. I'm delighted that we are all together at last. Our meeting will therefore be able to kick off shortly. I have just a few more little preparations to take care of before you all find out the reason for your presence here. In the meantime, I shall leave you to get to know one another. When you hear the bell, please proceed to the conclave room on my left, behind that door. I'll see you later. Uh, could you spare a moment, please, sir? I'm glad you ask. I want to talk to you, too. Of course. I heard about your mother's disappearance. He looks concerned. I don't know why, but I doubt it's from sympathy alone. Well, let's see what he wants from me. Any news of her? Have you found her, maybe? We found traces of her that would indicate she's still on the island. A person of belongings? Yes, but nothing of great interest. Scraps of food, some clothes... Ah, uh, I see. Well, too bad. I shan't keep you, Monsieur de Richet. All right, then. Thank you. I hope that your search will prove successful and bring Sarah back to us soon. I must go now. I'll see you later.
What can I do for you, sir? I am at your service day and night, sir. What is outside on the island exactly? Lord Mortimer has made a point of keeping the main part of the island in its natural state, sir. For security reasons, only the wharves and the gardens are accessible to guests. If Sir would like to walk along the wharves, he has only to follow the pathway used upon his arrival. If he would like to walk in the interior gardens of the manor, I would advise Sir to pass through the portrait gallery. May I help Sir in any other way? Yes, what can I find on the second floor? That floor is strictly reserved for Lord Mortimer, sir. In the west wing on the second floor are his private chambers. In the east wing are the rooms reserved for Lord Mortimer's personal guests. At the moment, these rooms are reserved for Sir Holm, sir. But only authorized guests may access that area. Does sir have any more questions? What is outside on the island exactly? Lord Mortimer has made a point of keeping the main part of the island in its natural state, sir. For security reasons, only the wharves and the gardens are accessible to guests. If Sir would like to walk along the wharves, he has only to follow the pathway used upon his arrival. If he would like to walk in the interior gardens of the manor, I would advise Sir to pass through the portrait gallery. May I help Sir in any other way? What's on the first floor? The first floor is reserved for guests, Sir. That is where Sir will find his private rooms. The main corridor leads around the building. Three stairways will enable Sir to return to the ground floor. It is also from there that Sir will be able to reach the second floor. Thank you very much. Anything else, Sir? Yes. Can you briefly describe the ground floor, please? Very well, Sir. On the ground floor, there are mainly living rooms. Sir finds himself at present in the Grand Hall. From the Grand Hall, Sir can access, on one side, the small salon where the guests like to relax with a good book. From there, Sir can access the conference room, which is closed at present for preparations. That is where Lord Mortimer likes to gather all of his guests for talks. From the other side of the Grand Hall, Sir may access the dining room. That is where Sir's meals will be served. From the dining room, Sir may benefit from an exceptional view overlooking the island. It is also the best way to access the portrait gallery, where a large part of Lord Mortimer's works are exhibited. And in the gallery, Sir will also find access to the garden. But Sir may be reassured, the building is accessible on both sides, so that it surrounds the garden in question. So, Sir should not find cause to worry. No one has ever gotten lost. Mm, except for my mother. Has Sir uh, another question? Lives of the Noble Greeks and Romans by Plutarch. A biography of the great men.
What do you want, Louis? Rude. I've already asked you, but I don't remember the answer. What did you say to me about going beyond the nightmare? Good heavens, you're losing your memory. I haven't the least idea what it might mean. Oh, all right. Mm, that's too bad. Beyond the Nightmare. Does this line remind you of anything in particular? You caught me unaware here, Louis. Let me think about it a second. No, nothing comes to mind. Sorry, Louis, but I am unable to help you. Mr. President, can you tell me a little more about the coming conference? Of course, Louis. That's why we're here. Lord Mortimer or Sir Gregory regularly organize meetings like this to put forward major projects. What do you mean by major projects? I'd prefer to let Lord Mortimer explain that to you, Louis. Let's say he brings together influential people in order to consider possible actions to undertake to guarantee the future of nations. Do you know the theme of the conference? Not in the slightest. None of the guests know the theme before arriving, but you'll see, everything will turn out fine. Don't worry. Well, thank you for your time. Don't mention it, my young friend. Regarding your question on the nightmare, don't hesitate to question the others about it. Maybe one of them knows more than I do. That's a good idea. Thank you once again. I'll see you in a little bit. Ah, Louis. Just the man. Good Lord. How did the king come to be executed? I would think that the Order would have intervened. Your Eminence, I haven't been following the case. I'm sure that the Order did everything in its power. Unfortunately, you know the situation in Paris and, well, it's chaotic at best. Anything can happen in those revolutionary tribunals. The King is the official representative of God on earth, my son. Your Eminence, France has become a secular state. The king was just another citizen to them. He refused to admit his errors, looked down upon them, and attempted to escape. What did he expect? France has lost all reason, Louis. I invite you to speak about it with my mother as soon as she reappears. Uh, is there any news of her? I... well, I hope it won't be long before I find her, Your Eminence. Louis, I'm counting on you. If you don't find Sarah before my departure, I must ask you to give me back the letter I gave you. Well, don't worry about that, Your Eminence. Now you wanted to speak to me. If I say the nightmare to you, does it make you think of anything? 
Hmm. Your question is strange, my son. Difficult to say. Could you at least tell me a little more about the context? Well, I mean, if it were a place or an object found on this island, what would you think of first? Hmm. The nightmare. No, I don't see anything. I'm sorry. Well, that's too bad. Ah, wait. I suppose it might be that horrible painting hanging in Lord Mortimer's study. Pretend not to be that interested. Right. Well, don't worry about it. I was... I was just curious. Thank you for everything, Your Eminence. I shan't take up any more of your time. You are welcome, my son. I will be seeing you, Louis. Here, right? So, what did my mother mean by going beyond the nightmare? The nightmare painted by Fusili in 1781. Ah, this must be what my mother was talking about. Now just need to find out what she meant by go beyond. Hey, looks like it's mounted on rails on each side. It should lift up, I think. There must be a mechanism somewhere. Carnalite water. found it. Oh, what on earth is this? A ring lock now? Great. That's all I needed. Great. isn't finished. History of the First Crusades by Pierre Amédée de la Sarde. Hey, the dates indicate AL and it looks like 4,000 years have been added to our calendar. All oh, that counting system again. The Crusades took place not long after the year 1000. Here all the dates say 5,000 and something. I'm guessing this dating system begins 4,000 years before the calendar that we use. Yet, I'm getting the feeling that there's something else, another small detail, but, but what is it? The famous call from Pope Gregory VIII in his Odita Tremendi Bull of 5,187. Oh, the crusade where Richard the Lionhearted distinguished himself. It states the first sea blockade of Saint-Jean d'Acre was broken in the 12th month of 5,190 AL, whereas the siege had been going on for two years.
I got it wrong. It doesn't matter. Looks like there's a marker on number one on the second roller. There's a marker on number one on the second roller. History of the First Crusades by Pierre Amade de la Salle. Hey, the dates indicate AL and it looks like 4,000 years have been added to our calendar. All oh, that counting system again. The author is Pierre Amade de la Salle. says of me. See what you've been hiding, Lord Murderer. Weakness of the Human Psyche by Gihom Trimor. Hmm. He says, It is possible to drill an idea into someone by constant daily repetition until the mind gives in. And goes on, There are hundreds of good ways to live life, but you only need one to convince the masses that it's the only one possible. <laughs> the author isn't letting any ethical principles get in his way, is he? This is my mother's writing. I've picked up her trail. What is she up to? Obviously, she wants to lure Mortimer somewhere, but... but where? The only clue she's left for Mortimer is his stone sword. It must be intentional. It looks like a decorative sword, like from a statue, for example. And judging by the state of it, I'm guessing it's been left outside for a long time. I have absolutely got to find out where it came from. Oh shit, how am I going to get out of here now? Is it the same cold? This looks like the same mechanism as the one on the other side. 
It looks too easy. It could be a trap. Whoa, whoa. If the grid closes a bit more every time I enter a wrong date, I'd, I'd better not mess up again. It doesn't seem to be working. This looks like the same mechanism as the one on the other side. Cornered like a rat. Someone's coming. Please don't let it be Mortimer. Who is it? Deliberately avoiding me. Four years ago I was his favorite, but nowadays I have to ask for an audience with his Lord Jeff. Damn it! It's Peru. Mr. Peru! It's Mr. Deriche. I'm sort of trapped behind this painting. What are you playing at, goddammit? Help me out of here, please! How can I open it? There's a pedal under Lord Mortimer's desk. Can you see it? There's no... Hang on. Yes. Good. Now press it. Yeah, yeah. Done. You should see something resembling a frame with numbers. Yes? You have to turn them to set the combination. One, one, nine, one. Poking our nose into Mortimer's little secrets, are we? You do surprise me. It's not what you're thinking. I'll explain everything. No, you will not, sir. It has nothing to do with me, and by the way, I never even saw you. So, I'll be on my way now. Thanks again. I'm indebted to you. I won't forget this. Yeah, goodbye. Wasted enough time. I better get moving if I want to find my mother. is about a meeting with Lord Mortimer. There's no doubt about it. All right, I need to find out where the sword that came with it's from. Okay, that will be it for this episode of the council. Um, we are still technically on episode two, but we will finish that. Right when we finish that, we will continue on to episode three. 
So I hope you enjoyed. Make sure you subscribe, turn on post notifications, and give this video a big thumbs up. And I will see you next time. Peace.